Yo, what's up, everybody? So it is 2020. Happy 2020 to all my friends on YouTube, all you YouTubers out there. Uh, I'm going to start a new resolution called Inside the Song, which just basically means I'm just going to open up a song and show you inside of it. Um, and this is a new track with my band Philia that we have been working on like literally for the last week and a half. And it's a total banger. I'm real excited to show it with you guys. Um, I'm going to play it through and then I'm going to kind of dissect it from like beginning to end. This isn't going to be super long just because all of us who have short attention spans don't really need that. But I'm going to just kind of walk you through how I started the track. Um, let's listen to it first and then we'll dive in. sampled a goat if you heard that i just want to like rewind because we can like i totally just sampled like a goat off of youtube although technically i think it was a lamb it says lamb and uh i just like dropped it in there and warped it and that was right before the drop and when we release this nobody except for you watching right now will probably know this so i just wanted to say that i love putting random shit in all my songs <laughs> Basically what I did here, a uh, fun pro tip for any of you Ableton nerds, is a lot of times I'll produce something that's like 50% of the way there as far as a whole song, and then I'll start bringing in my dudes in my Philly Alive band, like Dakota Mucky, shout out to that guy, uh, he's an Indianapolis singer-songwriter, guitarist, bluesy, shredder, um, and I just had him just like kind of fiddle around, and I went in here into Session View, and I recorded him playing all these different clips in Session View. Um, and I just looped it in arrangement view over here and I just did like a loop like that and I just kind of looped over and over and over and over until I found the right part in here that I wanted You can see there's like a lot of different clips of different ideas He jotted down and then I would just kind of loop that in as you can see and I copy and paste it from this view in session view Into arrangement view. That's one really nice thing about Ableton Live a lot of other dolls don't have is the ability to use both views as you're producing in arrangement view so uh, that's what he did. And I just chopped up the different guitar ideas that he had and dropped them in here, dropped it like it's hot. He is actually a phenomenal guitar player and I was just really picky. So I just copy and pasted a bunch of different parts. I'm using a guitar emulation called uh, Garage, or not Garage Band. <laughs> what are you talking about, Dan? Uh, called Guitar Rig, yeah, in here. And um, this thing sounds fantastic. And I live in an apartment, so like I don't want to blow all my neighbors away. And they're pretty cool, so even if I did, I think it'd be all right. But uh, he basically just shredded it, and then I put the Echo Ableton's audio effect to add some nice delay in there. <laughs> And the dry wet, I, I kind of always like on my effects, like for delay especially, turn the dry wet like all, not all the way up, but like to like 70% so you can hear some of that dry signal still. And then dial in all the other things like over here, I've got it set to eighth notes. 
Um, and then I did some automation on the feedback knob over here for fun um, at the tail end of this, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but then I just kind of dialed the dry wet back. So let's just hear it with a lot of it and then I'll pull it back as I did. <laughs> So it gives it a little bit of a nice little like wetness to the delay. But yeah, anyway, so then I did some automation. I've done probably more automation on this entire song than I have any other track. I want to show you guys the drop because I did a lot of sound design there. So let's go there next. But uh, I did some automation with the feedback on the echo here. That delay, you'll hear that really build up into the drop. And I do a lot of this kind of stuff when it comes to transitions. A lot of automation to kind of get from one section of the song to the next. Usually I don't have just one track for the entire guitar part, and this is where, I'm sorry, I feel so bad for stopping it there because the song gets like crazy epic at this point. But I think it's important to note that I've got a rhythm guitar track and I've got a solo guitar track, and I'm using two, uh, very similar chains on both, but I added some extra flair. Like, um, I think I did a little more saturation, so I used Ableton's pedal right here, and I don't really turn the gain up that much, but... I didn't have that on, I don't think, in the other track, and it just gives it more grit and distortion. Um, but then I did a whole another similar thing, like I said before, where I just looped, and I just let him solo over here on a new blank clip. You can see these three different loops and takes he did, and I just copy and pasted it in here, um, and this is what it happened. Um, also, for that drop for the dirty bass, I did uh, a group of several different iterations of wobbles. I used Serum. I'm all about the serum. If anybody uses serum, like you know, um, serum's great for like fat, synthy bass stuff. Uh, I did the compression over here, uh, like a three to one ratio, just a tiny bit of compression, um, just to let it kind of pop through. Um, then I filter out a lot of the the lows. It looks like um, for that patch, where'd it go? Yeah, and then uh, I did a little bit of auto pan just for fun. Um, let's actually hear what that sounds like. So. So you notice on the auto pan I did a little bit of automation and I like to kind of make it like sputter back and forth to the left and right speaker. It's kind of fun. So uh, a lot of people I see just like go into Serum, they just find a really cool patch and that's fine. I like to mess around with like patches and kind of create my own from that patch. And then uh, it's it's a good starting point. That's a good starting point, I think, for a producer like to use presets, but also kind of don't be afraid to tweak them and make them your own. That's where it becomes really fun, and you get a unique sound. You'll notice that these are grouped together, and so I start like grouping a lot of your favorite effects, especially if you make like dubstep or like bass music or whatever, uh, like jammy stuff. I would say start saving your presets, and it just makes it really fast. Because I was able to build this drop really quick, because I already had presets of like these four favorite bass synths that I use. So let's listen to the rest of this drop and then we'll move on and I'll show you the next drop, which I'm just as excited about, if not more, and how I took like a, a patch and made it really distorted and fat from my friend playing his Roland keyboard. <laughs> So that was pretty fun. Um, and then the next part is just. It's, uh, my friend played saxophone and we used a Shure, uh, I think it was like a Beta 57 microphone. Um, 
and clipped that onto his mic or his uh, saxophone. And I didn't do a whole lot to this. I just used my return tracks, fed it to a bunch of delay, fed it some reverb, and then I uh, used the Pro Q2 just to kind of dip. There's some spikes in here that were bothering me. I love FabFilter's Pro EQ for this reason. <laughs> It sounds a little thin for me, so I'm gonna like play with the EQ. like I feel like adds a ton to this track so I want to show you kind of how I made that cut through the mix it's actually just a recording of my friend playing his Roland synth it's just a, a patch he had and then I slapped an OTT on it and this thing's amazing Ableton's multi dynamics uh, with a little bit of I mean it, this thing is just it's called OTT for over the top it just smashes the shit out of stuff so uh, over here on the amount I turned up to like 30 that's really all I ever do with this, I usually just play with the amount. So right here, you can make it brighter or a little bit warmer. So let me solo it and I'll turn this off and then turn it on so you can hear the difference. And now if we turn it on. crazy that makes it like it's more in your face and it's just brighter so if you're not using the ott slap that thing on everything it's awesome but uh use the amount to dial it back to taste and then i did some more eq after that cut off some of the low ends a uh, little bit of side chain compression to make it jump out of the way when the kick drum hits so the side chain button right here is super important like you can make stuff jump out of the way when something else is happening so i made this jump out of the way to the kick drum <laughs> sampled a lighter in there at the end too you can hear a little i just put some reverb on it i think that's pretty much it yeah it's a good time uh so yeah that's kind of a quick dive into the track uh, let me show you that one last thing real quick on the keys um my secret weapon so without any of the plugins just dry out of his keyboard it sounded like this oops sorry no that's not true so it sounded, let me group all these together real quick. So if you highlight all these bad boys, and then we shift click, group them. Yeah, so basically uh, this makes a huge difference. So without anything, and that part's so big and so fat, like it needed a lot of treatment to actually get it to, to be like this huge epic lead that's just like ah like my soul is reaching into the sky you know 
Like, so I, I ended up putting a lot of stuff on it. My secret weapon for making stuff really distorted and thick, other than Ableton Saturator, shout out to that, it's amazing, is this thing. This is called the Culture Vulture. And this thing is a freaking tank. So this is a UAD plugin, and uh, I just messed with the drive here. This is like a British uh, modeled preamp. It's really famous. Um, but yeah, so I just turned down the output a little bit here and then um, turned on overdrive, this button, and that's just going to make it like crunch really loud in your face. This thing sounds so fat. I would put this on anything pretty much except for basses. Jack White used this uh, culture vulture on his vocals and a lot of other famous artists, but this thing's a beast. Um, anyway, so without it, it sounded like this. And with the treatment, it sounded like this. Uh, it's just like rich and fat and just, mm, it's dirty. So uh, yeah, I did an OTT. Um, I put, did some EQing after that, put a little bit of delay on it. Actually a lot of delay. Um, and what I did is actually, I didn't even, uh, this delay is only panning stuff from left to right. So uh, if you set the left to one millisecond and the right really short to like 25 milliseconds, feed back down and then you mess with the dry wet, that can make stuff sound really wide. So I'm really messing with like the phasing at this point of like making the panning of it sound like really big and stereo imaging, all that good stuff. So uh, the echo here, also I pulled down the dry wet to like 16 or 17, a uh, little bit of feedback just to give it some of that delay. Like I said, that other delay is only just messing with the panning. And then some more EQ after that. Uh, let's listen to it in the full entirety one more time. enjoyed this like posts in the chat uh, if you want me to do more videos like this like i said 2020 is new year um go out produce some bangers i'm going to be posting more videos inside of my tracks like this and different things of how i'm doing stuff uh, so if you enjoy it check it out also live producers online is where i can help you on your projects if you guys are interested uh post in the comments anything necessary and uh yeah i love you guys this is dan um, i'm going to release this under my artist name philia P-H-I-L-I-A. Just go to philiamusic.com. And uh, there's some more info in the show notes and stuff here. I'm going to post in the description of the video. Thanks for checking it out. Love you guys. Have a super rad Saturday. Happy New Year, everybody. And stay tuned for some more videos. And click that fat subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd love to meet you. Post in the comments. We'll hang out there. And uh, I'll see you guys.